I ghosted my husband literal days after our marriage. Alright y'all, this is going to be a journey so I recommend you buckle up. I honestly debated posting this for a really long time, but I've never told the whole story to anyone before. Several years ago, I think I was 19 at the time, I, I now 29, started up a relationship with the man of my dreams. He was beautiful, in the army, strong, and was essentially the all-American man. Lord knows he certainly ended up proving he was an all-American man. I'm talking the 50s stereotype complete with the raging misogyny and low-key god complex. I'd always been super self-conscious and had some wild insecurities, so when this dropped dead gorgeous man wanted me, I was over the moon and quickly fell head over heels for him. He was funny, kind, encouraged my passions, and always let me know in little ways that he appreciated my quirks and loved me even more because of them. He was perfect. I never saw it coming. The next two years became a nightmare. Having ensured that I felt I couldn't live without him, the emotional and mental abuse and manipulation began, so slowly that I never even noticed it. I used to be one of those women who thought, oh, you're in an abusive relationship? Just leave him babe, you deserve better. It is never that simple when you're in it. He made me feel like I was never going to do better, that I didn't deserve better, that I was too difficult to love, because I was just, so much, and only he was strong enough to give me what I thought I needed. It's funny now, but he used to always tell me that no one could give me dick like he could as well. Honestly, I can get better dick from the draw on my side table, but that's neither here nor there. When I say this man was a master manipulator, I mean it. He had me fully believing that his fetishism of my bisexuality was totally cool, i.e., it didn't count as cheating if I slept with a woman. As for what he did to me, it started with the where are you at texts and graduated to who are you talking to and are you talking to men. He ruined my working relationships, isolated me from family and friends, and made me feel so out of my mind crazy. He used to threaten me with leaving because I had to talk to customers and would gloat when I would essentially apologize for just breathing in a man's direction. I was so deep in the hole of depression and obsession that I couldn't even see what went wrong at the time. Eventually, he proposed and of course I said yes. The picking of my engagement ring was a whole mess of course. I didn't care about having an expensive ring, but apparently ring price is directly tied to virility or some shit because he insisted that everything I wanted was cheap and reflected poorly on him as a man. Not that the ring we ended up agreeing on was good either. It was simultaneously too cheap, too expensive, and not flashy enough. My taste sucked and I was shitty for insisting I wanted that garbage. He wanted to get married immediately, but I had always wanted a big wedding where all my family would be present. I have a massive family and I'm incredibly family-oriented. I also wanted to live together for a while before getting married anyway so we could decide whether we could stand each other in close quarters, this made me the devil and proved all I wanted to do was cheat on him. Eventually we agreed that I would move across the country to move in with him where he was stationed. We were so isolated. We weren't in base housing and our apartment was miles away from base or any major town and I was by myself for most of the day. He also had the only vehicle so I had no way to leave on my own. During this time, I was trying to get a degree and find a job and he insisted that I drop out of university and enroll in online courses and find online jobs so that I never left the house. He insisted that all I needed to be happy was to take care of him, cook his meals, clean his house, and stay barefoot and pregnant for the rest of my life. The dream of any good woman. After a week, I ran out of birth control pills, which shocked me because I had a three-month supply. I later found out he'd flushed them. We had discussed having kids before and I told him that for some serious health reasons, I didn't want to risk pregnancy. Also, my health issues make me the pug of people and I really don't want to pass those short straw genetics onto future humans because that feels like an asshole move. Anyway, of course we had a pregnancy scare. The women in my family get pregnant if you so much as sneeze at them, so the frat bro, who thought I was cruel for asking him to wear a condom didn't take long to try and lock me down with his spawn. I miscarried. It was traumatic. I was alone, and his sympathy couldn't even fill a thimble. Now on to our wedding. He took me to a courthouse after convincing me while I was grieving that it was the only way to prove that I loved him. I had just killed his child and the amount of money he'd spent on me meant that I was his anyway. Yeah, I know, disgusting. So we had to go get our marriage license signed by an officiant, which meant going to the cheapest immediately available person with the correct certifications. This next bit is impossible to make up. I felt like I was on a bad trip. We found an officiant on freaking Craigslist. We show up to their place of business and it's just someone's house and it looked super sketchy. Still, we were here and he wasn't about to listen to my protests so we just went in. And it was just someone's residence. No one was around and we were just walking around in a random house like a couple of confused trespassers until we came across a room full of babies and a really startled woman. She started questioning us in rapid Spanish and he became really irate with me that I couldn't translate fast enough. I know a little Spanish, but I understand it better than I speak it. This woman is becoming frantically terrified and that's when the officiant came bustling around the corner to see what the fuss was about and was able to explain our presence. They took us into this room that was the most ridiculous thing I had seen in my life. There was a lime green aggressive and rug strip leading to an Ikea style garden arch with plastic vines just everywhere. The walls were papered with positive affirmation posters, think the hang in there kitty poster. And the room smelled so heavily of incense that my nose and eyes immediately started running like a faucet. The officiant ran us through the Mario Kart speed run of ceremonies, and 10 minutes later, we were headed back to the courthouse to get our marriage legalized. That was it. My dreams of a wedding surrounded by the love of my family and friends, walking down the aisle with my dad, sharing the intimacy of the day with the most important people in my life, crushed. I will never accept this was my first marriage. It was a hostage situation, but that memory will always be there. Getting Getting married with a poster of a mountain view underscored with the words, a journey of a thousand miles starts with the first step, in my direct eye line. We get back home and it's time for our honeymoon, which meant I laid on my back and made all the appropriate noises while he did his thing, crowing about his prowess the whole time and, while thoroughly disappointing his now wife, suggested we call up one of his numerous satisfied exes to have her espouse the virtues of his vainglorious weenie, in bed, with me, on the day of our wedding. 
I was so numb inside that the absolute clown show of this man was starting to reach my subconscious. And boy did she have some tea to share with my conscious mind. The fog was beginning to lift. Fast forward two days. I made a joke. I don't even remember what it was, only that he was the butt of it. If you've made it this far and you know anything about abusive relationships, you know what comes next. He took me to the floor, remember he's military, and had my arm pinned so far up my back that he dislocated my shoulder. Oh boy was that like jumping into an ice cold river. I knew instantly that I had to get out. I was awake and I was terrified. I made all the obsequious apologies, went into survival mode, and waited until he was at work to call my dad and beg him for help. He bought me a next day flight, on Spirit Airlines. Never thought I'd ever say God bless Spirit Airlines, but hell. I made up some bullshit story about how I had to go home because my dad had gotten into a horrible car crash and might not make it, and convinced my hubby to drive me to the airport. I felt sick with terror that he'd figure it out and refused to let me leave while we sat in total silence for the nearly three-hour drive to the airport. I didn't feel safe until I boarded the damn plane. By the way there was literally duct tape holding the wing together and I still felt like tongue kissing the frickin' floor of this joke of an aircraft in gratitude. Needless to say, but I made it home. That's definitely not where the story of escaping this sociopathic toddler ends. If you can believe it, it gets crazier, but just getting this much out there has been exhausting. I will absolutely get part two out if anyone wants to know.